Okay, my chickadees, this is lesson number 126, 10 and 11 as factors. There are just a couple cool things that I wanted to talk to you about those two factors. 10, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, so much fun, and 11, very interesting. Okay, so before we begin, take your handy dandy, ooh, colored pencil and put in today's date and your name. Not my name, your name. <laughs> my name is Miss Caitlin. What's yours? Is it Eden? Is it Lila? Is it JD? Is it Isa? Is it Bethania? Oh my gosh, can you even see that? Yeah, you can see it. All right, today is May 12th. In class, you would definitely be able to see this. But it might be a little teensy weensy bit difficult on the video. Okay, here we go. All right, so we're multiplying by 10 and we're multiplying by 11. The great, so much fun thing about multiplying times 10 is that you don't even have to think about anything. You don't have to think as long as you know this. Okay, so here we go. Nine times 10 and 10 times 10 and eight times 10. All you have to do is take the zero from the 10 and put it behind the other factor, okay? So you copy the other factor and you add a zero. Done. Copy the other factor and add a zero. Done. Copy the other factor completely and add a zero. Done, 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 done. That's it. 60 times 10, 600. Seven times 10, 70, all right? You've got it. 11 times 10, 110. 12 times 10, 120. Just put a zero behind the other factor. Boom, boom, pow, you're all done. Okay, now here's the fun, cool thing. Oh, I put my hair in my pen and it pulled it. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna multiply times 11. So multiplying times 11 when your other factor is a single digit, okay? The single digits are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, all right? When you multiply a single digit by the factor 11, you just double the other factor, okay? Three times 11, four times 11, five times 11. All you have to do is double the other factor. 33, 44, 55. That's it, can you even see that? You can totally see that. So you, uh, that's better. Okay, okay, now you can see that it's like, <laughs> anyways, it's three times 11, three, three. Four times 11, four, four. Five times 11, five, five. Now, double digits times 11. Do something really cool. Okay, when you multiply a double digit times 11, you split the digits of the other factor, and then you add them together to create your middle digit. Now you're like, what? I'll show you. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick random numbers. And I'll do it with the ones that you definitely know what to do. 10 times 11, 10 times 11, you add the zero behind the other factor, right? So, you know that. 10 times 11, you're going to copy the other factor, which is 11, and put a zero behind it, 110. But 12 times 11, this is what I'm talking about. You split the other factors. So I put a one, and then a space, and then a two. I split them apart, 
and then I add them together. One plus two is three, and the answer is 132. All right, I'll do it over here. Um, let's do this again. All right, I split the two factors, one space three, and then I add them together. One plus three is four. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time like this, and then I'll prove it to you with addition, because multiplication is faster addition. We can, we can prove, I can prove any of these six different ways, right? The um, two ways to do the addition, you switch your add end and you get the same sum. sum. The two way you do your multiplication, you switch your factors and get the same product. And then you can prove the multiplication by doing the opposite with addition. Okay, so anyways, um, I split my two factors, one space four, and then I add them together, one plus four is five. All right, I'm gonna prove these, one, two, three, with addition over here, okay? So, actually, yeah, I'll start with this. 110, right? Okay. 11 times 10, and then these are all adding. Plus 11, plus 11, plus 11. Zero plus one is one. One plus one is two. And one plus zero is one, 121. That's 11 times 11. That's the one I wanted to prove over here. I was like, I'm missing one. I split my factors, one and one, and I add them together. One plus one is two. So this is proving um, 11 times 10 plus one is 121. Plus another 11, which is this equation. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. And one plus zero is one. And then I'm gonna add one more. Two plus one is three, three plus one is four, and one plus zero is one. And then I add one more. Three plus one is four, four plus one is five, and one plus zero is two. One hundred fifty-four. Oh my gosh, and now let's do it with this cool one, 33 times 11. I split my factors. Three and three, and then I add them together. Three plus three is six. 11 times 33 is 363. Okay, and now I'll prove that um, this way, okay? 33 times 11. One times three is three, one times three is three. Placeholder, which you're gonna learn in the next grade. One times three is three, and one times three is three. Add them together, three, six, three. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, when you multiply times 11, 11 times a single digit, you double the other factor. 11 times a double digit, you split them and then add them together to get your middle digit. See? Split, add. Split, add. Split, add. Split, add, split, add, split, add. Oh yeah. Okay, that's kind of cool. That's just my fun Miss Caitlin teaching about factors times 10 and factors times 11. All right, here we go. Uh, section one and section two together. Booyakasha. All right, let's do it in purple because I'm running out of black ink. Section number one, eight, five, 12, 11, and then you're gonna have to do the other ones. And section two, six, nine, 11, and eight, you're gonna have to do the other ones. All right, anything times 10, you put a zero behind it. That's how simple and how fun that can be. So in section number one, you're multiplying times 10. Can you see this color? Yeah, okay. All right, so you add a zero after the eight. Eight times 10 is 80. Five times 10 is 50. Yeah? 12 times 10 is 120. Can you see that? Yeah, 
And the last one you're not really going to be able to see, but that's 110. You put the 11 down and you put a zero behind it. And I'll do that one in black so, so you can like really super see it. You write the 11 and put a zero behind it, 110. Okay, here we go. I want another color because I just want to use them up like the way that we used to do in school. All right, when you multiply times 11 on a single digit, you double the digit. 6 times 11 is 6 and 6. 9 times 11 is 9 and 9. Let's skip over to 8. 8 times 11 is 88. And now we're going to split the double digit, add them together to get the number in the middle. I split the ones. 1, 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 121. I'm going to write that in black just to make sure that you super duper get it. And I need you to finish the other ones. I need you to do 7 times 10 and 6 times 10, 3 times 11, and 12 times 11. Okay? Now here we are for the story problems. Story problems. Ah, sing sweet nightingale. Sing sweet nightingale. Oh, oh, oh. All right, the four Thompson children bought their mother a birthday gift. They bought her a sweater for $36.95, wrapping paper for $1.65, and a birthday card for $2.26. If they share the cost equally, how much will each child pay? Now, two-step equation. We must add up everything they purchased. And then when you want to split something into exactly equal parts, that means you want to what? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. That means you want to divide splitting into equal parts or breaking something up into equal parts means you're going to divide it. Okay, here we go. They bought her a sweater. Remember, it's a word problem, so you need to involve the words in your equation. You've got to show the words in your equation. They purchased a sweater. They purchased wrapping paper. And a card. We need to add all of those things up before we can divide. Okay, so the sweater cost $36.85. And the paper cost $1.65. Put your decimal down first, lined up with the other decimal, and then surround it with the proper information, 165. And then the card was $2.26. Okay, five plus five is 10, and 10 plus six is 16. One plus eight is nine, nine plus six is 15, and 15 plus two is 17. 1 plus 6 is 7, 7 plus 1 is 8, and 8 plus 2 is 10, carry that 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. Bring down that decimal point and that dollar sign. Now, the children want to share the cost equally. If you're going to break something up into equal parts, that means you need to divide. So, we set up our division equation, $4.76, and then we count by the children. All right, the four Thompson children bought their mother a gift. Well, probably, oh, it says birthday gift. I was like, we just had Mother's Day. Okay, so the four Thompson children, you're going to divide by four. Here we go. Four into four is one. 1 times 4 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, 0 is less than 4, bring the 0 down. 4 goes into 0, 0 times. 0 times 4 is 0, subtract, 0 is less than 4, bring down. Alright, 4 goes into 7, 1 time. 4 minus 7, can you see this? 3? Very good. 3 is less than 4, we need to bring that 6 down. 4 goes into 36, 9 times. 
36 minus 36 equals zero. I'm going up on the side now. And zero is less than four. So we don't have to bring anything down. There's no remainder. Bring your decimal point up and the dollar sign that I forgot to insert in there. All right, so if they shared the cost equally, how much will each child pay? Each child will pay $10.19. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, 3B. Patrick accidentally spilled his jar of marbles in his classroom. Mrs. Dahl picked up 30, oh good, I had to keep reading. <laughs> Mrs. Dahl picked up 39 marbles. Patrick picked up twice as many as Todd, and Todd picked up one third as many as Mrs. Dahl. How many marbles did they pick in all? Okay, so the final question says in all. We know in all tells us to add. Very good. So we know we're going to add, and we know that there are three people involved. We have got to write their names. Mrs. Dahl, my brother Todd, and Patrick. Okay. Now we start filling in the information that we understand about these people. Let me get a green. Mrs. Dahl picked up 39 marbles. Well, we can put that on the left of her name right away. Okay? That says uh, 39. All right, I'll get my black. Meow. All right, 39. Now, it says Patrick picked up twice as many as Todd. Okay. Twice as many means two times, and we don't know how much Todd has done, so I just write Todd. Two times Todd. And then Todd picked up one third of Mrs. Dahl. One third of, and we know that Mrs. Dahl has done 39. So now we have our first equation. I say our first equation because we must please do what is inside parentheses first. All right, so one third of 39. If you want to, you can write it down. 39 divided by three. One, three, zero, nine, three, nine, zero. So now we know that Todd picked up 13. <laughs> Way to go, Todd! <laughs> And now, Patrick, we still have another parentheses. We still have a final parentheses right here. We have to do what is inside this first. Two times Todd. Now we know how much Todd has. So I erase Todd and I put in his number, which is 13. Two times three is six. And two times one is two. We are now ready to add. 9 plus 3 is 12, and 12 plus 6 is 18. 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, and 5 plus 2 is 7. How many marbles did they pick up in all? They picked up 78 marbles. Otherwise, I'm going to say what? 78 toe hairs? What? 78 boogers from the bottom of his desk? What? They picked up 78 marbles in all. Exclamation point to that. They must have been doing a big project. Okay, that is 3A and 3B. We are moving on to drawing geometric figures. The directions say you may need a ruler, which means you have the permission to use a ruler, but your teacher is saying you will use a ruler. <laughs> I'm going to go get them. Or it, whatever. Okay. 
We're going to draw a square, a rhombus, a circle, a right angle, and a parallelogram. Okay, so they want you to draw it underneath. A square is a special parallelogram. Four right angles and four equal length sides. The sides have to be the same length, okay? So you don't have a lot of room under your, under your page, so I would do a one inch square. I'm gonna do a four inch square. So four inches on this side, do my best to make a right angle, four inches on that side, four inches on this side, and four inches on that side. And then I'm going to draw, I'm gonna say four inches and four inches, right angles. That's the square. The next one is the rhombus. A rhombus is like a square and that it is a parallelogram and all sides are the same length. The difference is the angles. The difference is the corners, okay? So this is how I draw my rhombus. I choose a length. For you, it's gonna be about an inch. Mine's four inches. I drop down and then I move to the side, okay? I drop down and I move to the side and then I draw my other line. There, you see how they are not right underneath each other? And then I connect my two lines. That's how I draw my rhombus. It's not totally accurate, but it's more of a parallel. <laughs> it's supposed to be equal, okay. Anyways. Four inches, four and a half inches, what are you gonna do? Uh, I'm not a robot. Okay, if you really wanna draw a rhombus, if you really wanna draw a rhombus, okay, four inches on the top, and then you draw at an angle another four inches, okay? And then draw four inches, and then draw four inches, That's really a rhombus. Okay. <laughs> Next, you want a circle. Do your best to draw a beautiful circle. That's not bad. Do your best to draw a beautiful circle. This, not a circle. This, not a circle. This, not a circle. That, that's a circle. Woo! A party over here. Okay, uh, a right angle. A right angle is an open geometric figure containing two lines. Okay, you have a starting point. Put a dot to create your starting point. And then draw up and then draw to the side. This is really important. You need to draw directly up and then you need to draw directly to the side. This is not a right angle, that's an acute angle. And this is also not a right angle, that's an obtuse angle. Um, actually that might be a right angle. Well, here, I'll draw an even better one. That is an obtuse angle. It's very important that this line goes directly above and this line goes directly to the side, okay? And then the last one, a parallelogram. A parallelogram, can you see over here? Okay, so we do it like the rhombus, except our sides are, are not equal lengths. Okay, so we've got a long top side and then a short side side. And then we do a long top side and then another short side side, okay? So that is a parallelogram, all right? These two lines will never touch, and these two lines will never touch. These lines match, these lines match, they do not all match, okay? So that's how you draw those beautiful, beautiful things. And then you need to add and subtract your fractions, which I'm very confident that you are able to do that on your own. I gotta go for today.
be awesome, you elite genius scholars of the Lighthouse Church School.